One of the most common reasons people learn English is to get better job opportunities. But what if you've already got the job and you still feel like your English is not good enough? Well, in today's lesson, I'll walk you through my workday and we'll look at some of the most essential vocabulary that you need to know around the office. I'll also teach you some useful tips that you can use so you no longer have to feel anxious or nervous when using English at work. Let's go. So this is the reception area and at most workplaces you'll find that this is the first point of contact for clients or visitors to your office and you might find that you usually have a receptionist or someone who welcomes the clients or the guests into the office. So as this is a co-working office, that's not the case. There are many different people from many different companies working here. But there is space for clients or visitors to sit over there. And now I'll show you around this desk, the reception desk. So over here she has a desk organizer. And this is used to basically separate documents according to the actions that she needs to take. Down here, she has a desk drawer pedestal. And these are useful for keeping and organizing your documents, especially if you need to keep it safe. It usually comes with a little key. And the top drawer usually has a little organizer as well. So this is quite useful for keeping your stationery. And you can see over here, she has a stapler, a punch, scissors, pins, and this is sellotape. Something useful you might want to know about is the difference between stationary with an A and stationary with an E. So stationary with an E is pens and things like that, anything you use around the office. But stationary with an A means to stand still and not move. So when something is stationary, it's standing still. It's still, it doesn't move. So the next thing we're gonna look at is the printer, scanner, and copier. So most offices have these and I'm sure you know what they're used for. Over here we have ring binders and these are really durable files or folders that allow you to keep your documents neat and tidy without the edges getting you know, really messy and tearing or things like that. So I'm gonna leave Jean alone for now. Fantastic, have a good day. <laughs> Thanks, see you later. So there's a myth that the work environment requires perfect English, but what is perfect English anyway? It doesn't matter if you're not advanced because English for work is not about sounding fancy or smart. It's about using your English to solve problems and to communicate efficiently. You don't have to sound flawless, but you do need to familiarize yourself with business grammar and vocabulary such as idioms, collocations, and phrasal verbs. To make it easier to remember everything you learn in today's lesson, we've included a free downloadable PDF document. Watch until the end of the lesson because I'll reveal how you can access it. Most of us start our workday by checking emails and other communication. Well, I have a useful tip for you when it comes to responding to work emails and texts. Ever notice how our quick emails are often made up of one or two sentence paragraphs, many of which often start with the pronoun I. For example, I'm glad to hear from you or I'm looking forward to our meeting on Monday. To avoid having a series of paragraphs that begin with the word I, we drop some, but not all, of the pronouns. For example, I'm glad to hear from you would become glad to hear from you, or I'm looking forward to our meeting on Monday would become looking forward to our meeting on Monday. The same is true for texts and other quick business communication with expressions like these. Before we continue, if you're loving learning English that you can actually use in your daily life, then be sure to hit that subscribe button and bell down below so you never miss out on any of our new lessons. Now let's look at four business idioms that you're bound to encounter in the workplace. The first idiom we'll look at is to think outside the box. And this means to think creatively, unconventionally, and to come up with original ideas. For example, if you want to succeed in the marketing industry, you need to be able to think outside the box. 
Next, we have to get down to business. And this means to start getting serious about something. For example, after they introduced themselves in the meeting, they got down to business. Next, we have to get someone up to speed. Now, to get someone up to speed means to update someone on the current situation or to provide them with all the necessary information they need in order to complete their task. For example, after she returned from her vacation, her boss called her aside and got her up to speed on what had happened in the office. Now, the final idiom we look at today is to roll up your sleeves, and this means to prepare to do hard work. For example, she rolled up her sleeves and showed her boss why she deserved a promotion. So now I'll be entering the meeting room and since I meet my team online, this meeting room is used for filming. I use it for filming my Learn English with TV and Real Life English lessons. But for most people, it is common to use the space to get together with a small team and basically use the facilities here, such as the desk, the whiteboard, and the markers over there, brainstorm ideas, or to just have a chat um, about different topics or issues that they are currently facing. Now, let's look at some vocabulary related to meetings. Now, when we talk about meetings, we typically use the verbs have and hold. For example, we usually have a department meeting on Mondays, or we could say, let's hold a meeting about the issues we've been facing this past quarter. Now, when you're talking about a meeting that's going to take place in the future, you can use the words schedule, arrange, or organize to talk about a meeting that you're planning to have. Now, a formal way of talking about participating in a meeting would be to say that you're attending the meeting. Less formal would be to say that you're going to the meeting. For example, I'm going to attend the meeting on Friday, or he wasn't able to go to the meeting because he was stuck in traffic. Now let's talk about business phrasal verbs. And the first one we're going to look at is to come across something. Now, if you come across something, it means that you find it unexpectedly. For example, if you come across my keys in the break room, please return them to me. I've been looking for them all morning. The next phrasal verb we'll look at is drop by, which means to visit briefly or to meet without having an appointment first. For example, my boss asked me to drop by her office after the meeting. Next, we have to run something by or past someone. Now, this means to discuss something with a person in order to get their opinion. For example, I need to run this proposal by my manager before I submit it. Next, we have to zero in on something or someone. Now, this means to focus on that thing or that person. For example, after the team performed poorly, the manager decided to zero in on all of the staff members. You'll find that after learning these common phrasal verbs and repeating and practicing them, you'll start to feel more comfortable with using them and understanding them. And this is important because very soon you'll find that you're using them in your own word vocabulary. Are you ready to zero in on your English and become a confident, natural English speaker? Well, with our Real Life English app, you can do just that for free. You'll have access to real life conversations with our podcast, where we talk about how to best learn English, movies, culture, and so much more. The best part is that you can practice with new transcripts and flashcards every single week. You'll also be able to practice the new words that you've learned with speaking partners from around the world. You never again have to feel like a lost and insecure English learner. So download it right now for free by clicking up here or down in the description below, or simply search for Real Life English in your favorite app store. So now we're 
about to enter the boardroom and this would be the place you would come if you want to have more serious discussions with clients or your team. And it's larger than the meeting room, as you can see. There's a lot more space for everyone to sit or stand. Maybe you'd like to do some team building in the boardroom. So boardrooms are usually equipped with things that allow for longer meetings and more in-depth discussions. So this is where you'll find things like the smart TV, where you could display your work or your presentation. There's also a power point in the middle of the table over there. Oh, there. <laughs> There's also a whiteboard and an eraser and whiteboard markers. And there's a lot more space here. So as I mentioned, you could have a team building session where people are getting up and standing. You could have food here. You could have, there's a lot of different things you could do in the boardroom depending on your team's needs. It's, it's really a space that's meant for, you know, sitting down, coming up with ideas and thinking. But I think depending on your team, you could use the space, as I said, for different purposes. There are tons of vocabulary points that I could cover related to the boardroom and presentations and more serious meetings. But instead, today we'll focus on four areas of serious meetings. And I'll show you how you can respond to these different areas, which are interrupting, giving your opinion, agreeing and disagreeing. Now there will certainly be times when you'd want to interrupt the discussion and it helps to use polite phrases to do so. So here are three of my favorite ones. Sorry for interrupting, but excuse me, could I say one thing? May I please add something? Let's look at sharing your opinion. Now let's imagine that you believe that the strategy will be a success and you want to share this opinion with your teammates. So you could say, I strongly believe that it will be a success. I'm convinced that it will be a success. I'm positive that it will be a success. I have no doubt whatsoever that it will be a success. But if you would like to base your opinion on your experience, you could also say, in my experience, this will be a success. While agreeing is usually a positive thing, it helps to know how to do it. And here are three common ways to agree during a meeting. You could say, I completely agree or I couldn't agree more. And if you're agreeing with something someone else said, you could say, I'm with them. For example, Kate, I'm with Kate on this. In English, saying that you disagree with someone can come across as too direct and can seem impolite. That's why it helps to know some useful phrases and ways to disagree. So you could say, I see where you're coming from, but, or, that's a valid point, but, or you could say, I see things differently because using the words, I'm sorry, can also make the phrase seem more polite. For example, I'm sorry, but I completely disagree. Or I'm sorry, but I don't agree with that at all. Now, you might be wondering, what can I possibly do to improve my job-related vocabulary? And the answer is simple, read. Read as much as you possibly can about business and specifically about your area of expertise or your field of study. One of my favorite resources when it comes to job-related topics is Indeed.com. From resumes to interviews to salaries to career development, there are articles on almost any topic. It also helps to read business news articles like Forbes or Business Insider, as these help you stay up to date with current events or trending topics within your industry. LinkedIn is one of my favorites, and although it's structured like a social media site, there are tons of benefits to using it. The top three benefits that I would like to share with you is that it's great for professional networking, job searching, and there are also tons of free resources that you can use to develop your skills. 
So it's common office culture for co-workers to talk around the water cooler. And what this involves is stepping away from your desk and having chit chat or small talk with your co-workers and basically talking about personal things, so not work related. And you would be having conversations about your life, your interests, and sometimes even gossiping, which is obviously not a good thing to do. And basically the space is meant to make you feel like you can really relax and not worry about your work. You're meant to feel as though you're stepping into a different space. And another thing that you might have in your break room is a kettle for making coffee, a microwave for heating up your food, and of course a refrigerator. And of course this is meant to be a space where you can relax. So this is where you would take a break, put your feet up, <laughs> and just relax between meetings or between tasks that you still have to complete. Such an awesome day spent with you guys here at the office, but it's getting late. You might have noticed that it's quite dark and empty. So I'm getting ready to leave now. But before I do, do you remember all of the words, tips, and phrases that we've shared today? Well, if not, don't worry, because we've put together a free downloadable PDF document that you can access by clicking on the link in the description below. So you can practice whenever you have a chance. One more question before we get going. Do you enjoy these types of lessons about everyday activities? Well, if so, let us know down in the comments what other everyday activities would you like to learn more about? And we might just do a lesson about it soon. If you would like to continue your learning with us, then be sure to check out this lesson next. So today I'm going to teach you some important vocabulary around the home, as well as some interesting idiomatic expressions related to objects in the home. For example, do you know the difference between a photograph and a portrait? Well, a photograph can be an image of absolutely anything, while a portrait, on the other hand, is usually an image of a person or animal.